Hi, it's Eka from Apocalyptica, and I want to send my best wishes and love to everybody here at Orbita Rock. We are coming to Bogota very soon. Check out the date and come to share the fun because it's going to be great fun. It's always with you, Colombia people. So take care and see you soon. <music>
and uh, it, it gave us actually a great freedom like like a big free space to yes. do whatever we wanted we didn't have to think about anybody else and that, that was really cool good. many times you have to be in touch and you have to i don't know work with other people and follow their rules follow their things yeah and something different to do it by yourselves yes the way you want the way you want to organize it yes and it's also the whole point of doing collaboration is that the the, the people we work with they bring their own impact into the the thing so it, it is amazing and we love to do that the collaboration because that's the magic of it that somebody who thinks differently than we do is bringing something into the song and but the, just for the instrument we were like well, we know how to record we have learned everything of that and nobody can really tell us anything new what comes to the actual actual recording process and um and we just didn't want to negotiate with anybody <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to be very self-driven with good. This. talking about your beginnings because uh many of, of our followers know you but most of them don't know about your beginnings how how did you start with this idea of forming a group that played classical music with metal instruments from metal music? Can you tell us a little about? You know, the thing was that, that uh, we were studying classical cello and we were already working as the uh, professional freelance musicians, but still studying. And um, we were big fans, especially me. I, I, I was a huge fan of metal music since I was a young teenager. And um, I was always wearing Metallica shirts and stuff like that. And yes. even I was there in the classical world. But uh, and I had in my uh, cello class in Tibor Sagan, we had a six cello group. It's still existing. You can Google Total Cello Ensemble. That's the, that's the group called. And before Africa, we were playing with that group. We played all kinds of stuff, you know, uh, some. Uh, some evergreens, we played even Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, we played some Argentina tangos and, you know, all kind of stuff. So I, I kind of knew that, okay, cello band actually works for many different types of music. And I was like, you know, if we can play Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix, why can't we play For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica? And then I did the arrangements and we played for our own fun for a couple of years. And we had no plan to form a band. It was more like a bunch of friends who loved metal music and just happened to play cello. So it was... Um, there was there was no master plan. We didn't even try to get the record deal. We got it offered uh, after one first time we played for Metal Crowd in Helsinki, and uh, we did the first album. And we were thinking if we sell a thousand copies, we get a few gigs. That's cool, you know. And then suddenly everybody, wow, this is revolutionary. Exactly. For us, it was the for us it was the, the simple thing. We just play the music we love with the instruments we can play. So uh, we didn't expect anything. Did you imagine that you had that kind of impact around the world? Because as no, you no. said, it's something new for everybody. Like, well, we know classical music as the one in a theater, very for formal things. But then this impact of, wow, these people are play playing these beautiful instruments, but they are playing metal music. Yeah. You never imagined that yep. you were going to be. No. No, not at all. It was just our own own personal anarchy, and we were so focused on just you know doing what we want, and we didn't think what's gonna happen after that. So we 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 were so focused on actual doing, so we didn't think about what would be the impact. Uh, we didn't really expect any kind of impact. <laughs> <laughs> but then they, they, well, yeah, then things started to happen, and we yeah. made the second album, and then we started actually more to become like a band, to kind of identify ourselves. Uh, not just the cello, but cellist friends, uh, more as a band. And that was kind of the cult album. The third album was big turning point when we started to to yeah. record our own music only, or mainly. And exactly. uh, I think that was the time we started to become a band. So <laughs> it, was, it was an ac accident. But you know, sometimes the best things, they happen when you don't have any master plan. You just do, you just focus on doing. I think that's in general in life. That's yes. when you focus on doing and you trust the process, something magical can happen, something that you can't even imagine. And that's what happened to us. And I think that was the reason we were so focused on doing it. We were very passionate with it. Yeah. And um, because it was the music we love. So of course we took it seriously. And oh, um, 
but but not in the wrong way seriously like we were still having fun <laughs> with it yes of and course exploring with it so. that's good and throughout your career with all this experience uh, you were telling me with the collaborations you have had you also have collaborations with Corey Taylor Christina Scavia how do you choose these people and what do you look for when you uh, have a collaboration um every collaboration has a different background story you know sometimes it's like like we just have the music and we think who would be good for this who would be suitable and then we start to talk with people sometimes we are talking with people let's make something together and then we end up writing a song together um so every time is a different procedure um yes. so there's no general rule there's no general formula how we... you have played many many concerts all around the world in these recent years what has been your most memorable concert experience and why do you have any special that you say wow this one everyone. no 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 because they're they're they are we've been very well, lucky to play so many so amazing places and so many amazing concerts but of course, uh, our first visit to Bogota Rocket Park in uh, 2005. That, uh, that, that's one of those that shows that I uh, uh, remember always because yeah. it was uh, our first first kind of touch of uh, Latin America outside of Mexico. And uh, it, was, it was just insane. But um, I don't know. It's, every show has its own qualities and it's impossible to compare uh, different gigs. There's been so many yes. cool things like, you know, playing with Metallica on the anniversary shows uh, on the 30th anniversary uh, in San Francisco or playing different festivals. So our first old show in uh, in Mexico City National Auditorium, um, yes. uh, 10,000 people in the own Apocalyptica show. And there's so many, so many cool things, so many cool things happening. So I, I'm not keeping any kind of list. I barely remember everything. And then I had to start to think, oh, yeah, that was that was cool. You know, that was cool. And so on, so on, so on. So. It's been mainly good shows, so it, it, uh, it's not possible to pick up. Exactly. Every, every show, every concert, every tour has something different, something new for you. Yeah, and every show, it's on experience. And 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 how the experience on stage is, to me, it it is not about the conditions. It's not about the, how the venue is or many times people think that uh, from outside, they think that this and these things are cool. You know, they are the coolest to play a stadium. Yeah. You know, it's cool in a way. It has its own qualities, but then it doesn't have certain qualities that we have in the rock club, you know, in the smaller venue. It has a certain qualities which, which are not comparable yeah. with, uh, with each other. How do you prepare for a tour? Do you have any special preparation? How do you keep energy? Because you have to to rehearse and you have long tours during many months uh, giving concerts. Yeah, you know, of course, always when we start a big tour, there's a lot of planning. Like where, like now we have a video screens and stuff and it's like a con creation and all the stuff and, and picking up with songs and what kind of set list and with kind of well, all kind of structures and and. So there's a lot of planning of that, but then when we are on the tour mode, we don't really have practice much uh, for touring because we play so much shows. So it, it kind of goes goes it by itself. But uh, energy wise, trying to stay healthy, try to sleep as much as possible. Usually, yeah. not very much <laughs> uh, available, and you know, have fun. Just to just to maintain a kind of healthy habit. That that's Excellent. the only way only way to serve i mean the longer run because when you party and drink and uh, stuff like that it, you can do it for a, a certain amount of time but then it starts to burn you out uh, yeah so you know <laughs> you live and learn we have had all the faith you now uh, during all this yeah uh, these years you know going down south and uh, getting up and, <laughs> and doing better and doing worse <laughs> you know <laughs> keep yourself how where you get your motivation from you know it it needs to be you need to know kind of where you get your motivation to play a show every night because otherwise you can't can't create the best possible experience every night and that that's, that's kind of the challenging part not to get bored of it you know not yeah. to kind of think that oh, I you know stop respecting all the good <laughs> things because something is shit and you get yeah. tired of certain things so it's like learning to have uh, 
learning to use different perspectives. And when you start to feel shitty, then you need to step out and see yourself from another perspective and see the bigger picture. And then it's like, oh, but this is amazing. These people are coming to see the show. So I need to get give my best. You know, yeah. for example, when there is a moment of motivation, like you're like, everything is shit, there's no food, that this and this and this. <laughs> and, and if you start to focus on that, then then it's not going to be very enjoyable. But when you focus on being grat- grateful for, for the actual thing that you are playing the shows and there are people coming to experience and share it. You have been together for many years. I think maybe 25 years. What has helped you to be together for making music? Uh, how do you How do you do it? Because we know that many groups, many bands, they separated because they have difficulties, problems. But you guys are recognized because you continue together. You look that you are very good friends. How do you do it? And there's the one, one key word, talk. You know, you need to talk. Yeah. And that's the only way. Um, you know, things escalate in, in all, all intense connections. And the band is, is the, one of the most complicated. It's like a... It's a like a marriage with multiple people without benefits. Yeah, and, <laughs> and at the same time you are friends, and you do this, you do the creative process, which is always very fragile. And then you run the business together, like your business partners, and your kind of brothers. And then uh, it, it's so many aspects in there, and and only way is to take care of each other and talk whenever there is problems, not to avoid them, don't not to think that they just go away by themselves and have to talk so we, we have learned that in the hard hard ways you know that we have had shitty times uh, over the years many many times and we've been in the very bad places but we've been able to to come out and find the, the kind of the common motivation and and then um to learn also how not to let the things to get wrong when we feel signs that something is off that then we need to be active on getting things back on track and that's how it works i think it's with every relation but that requires also people that they are able to talk and listen. Exactly. Two skills. Even the bigger skill than to talk is to listen. To listen also. Yeah. Very important. Yes. Oh, my God. Well, Eka, it, it has been a pleasure to interview you, to have you here. We are expecting to see you on April the 22nd here in Bogota. Um, we want to thank you. We continue following you. I am a big fan of you guys since woo, <laughs> yeah. years ago. And I'm going to be there in your concert, of course. Thank you. See you, more. See you soon. See you in April. Yeah.